Hi there. In this quick video, I wanted to walk through setting up a managed service identity authentication from a virtual machine running in Azure to Azure PostgreSQL service using the Azure Active Directory integration that's currently in public preview, currently as of March 2nd, uh, 2020. So this document over here describes how to set up regular users or service principles to authenticate uh, with Azure Postgres. And what I want to double click on is how to make it so that a virtual machine that has managed service identity configured can then obtain a token using the managed service identity API locally without having to store a secret for the correct resource. So this is not the resource we will be using. I'll show you a different one. And then use that token as the password. So in short, the way it works is when we, cre we create an identity inside of Postgres service that maps that login to an Azure Active Directory user or service principal. In our case, it will be Post uh, Managed Service Identity. And then when we actually log in, what we do is we use the access token that we will obtain for that user as the password in the password connection of that user. So let's go through the steps. I'll show you real quick. So I already deployed a set of resources, uh, just very simply a Postgres serv service right here. And I deployed the virtual machine in the same network as the Postgres service. I'm saying region as the Postgres service. And then what I did with the Postgres service, I configured a couple things. Number one is I configured it to be able to be accessible from Azure services. So that virtual machine IP address that it uses to talk to, um, to this uh, Postgres will be allowed versus being blocked by the firewall. That's number one thing I did. And number two thing is following the document, I went to the Active Directory admin tab and I set up an admin to a user called admin at my fake you know, tenant or my tenant in my active directory. And this is just the user in my active directory. So there can be one admin from an active directory for Postgres. And I did it by saying set admin, searching for the user, and then basically saying setting it. So it is set on this Postgres. So I can now log in into this Postgres using either Postgres users that I defined when I created Postgres, or I can connect it using Active Directory. So you can see my admin users are connected using the Active Directory. So over here, I'm on a VM, uh, SSH into a VM that I can use for testing. And I have two connections open to that VM just so we can test two different things. So number one, what I will do is I will try to connect to my Postgres server using my built-in regular Postgres username. It will prompt me for password that I configured when I created it. And I'm there. I can see my databases and I can see other things on the server right now. What we will try to do next is following the documentation. We'll try to see if we, when I'm logged in using a regular admin user, into Postgres, I can create association to Azure users. So let's see, I will try to basically define this. I will say that allow user one to be able to log in. And we can see the error message that I wanted to highlight is we must be an Azure admin AD admin to set up a user. So I cannot log in as Arsene, as a regular Postgres user, to set up AD authentication either for other users or for MSI. And again, what I need to do is I need to log in as this user to perform this operation. So how do we do that? What we will do is we will, uh, I already am logged in with Azure CLI using this user in this session. And we will get an access token for this user, it's temporary access token for this resource. How do I know this resource? Again, it's documented 
in this documentation describing exactly how we're going to get the token. I just want to show you specifically how it looks. And when I run this command, it will return to me the access token. It's this long string, which is obviously a secure string that uh, the reason I'm sharing it on the screen is because it will not work soon. But this is the string that I can use as my password. So I'm going to, for now, go back to the connection that I have here. I will exit the session. And I will say that instead of logging in with the user that I have been using so far, I will log in with the admin user um, that we defined. So how are we going to do that? We're going to change this username right here to be the admin user, admin1. And OK, so that's going to be my string that I will use. If I do it now, it will prompt me for a password. If I try to copy this password, this long string in that password field, it's not going to work because somewhere it's getting truncated in this, U, in this uh, uh, command line tool. So instead what we'll do is we'll set a PG password variable that psql will use instead of prompting. So I will, again, I'll just paste this long string there We'll double check it is correctly set. Great. On my screen. And we'll try connecting again. Now it will not prompt me anymore. And you can see I was able to connect as that user. And what we can try to do now is we can try to create the identity uh, that we tried before. And we got that error message that cannot be done. Right. So right now the error message is completely different because I'm trying to, to add a fake user here and that user could not be validated because the user is not present in the domain. OK. So instead of this, there's not any ways what we wanted to do. We wanted to add an MSI as the user. Here is the syntax that's not yet documented of adding an MSI user. So I will just include this syntax right here. We would basically give the user a name, such as, let's say, AV Postgres 2 MSI. And then instead of the password field, we would put here the client ID of the managed service identity. So what is this managed service identity and where do I get it? So if you remember, we have a virtual machine running here. To this virtual machine, I assigned an MSI, and how I can see it is under virtual machine, under identity, I assign the user assigned identity, and this is the identity. So if I click on this identity, I can see its client ID, its object ID, okay? And I can also see other information about this MSI. So obviously the identity can be created in the portal, or uh, what I did is I opened uh, the Cloud Shell, and using Azure CLI Cloud Shell, I already did this command, AZ Identity Create, in this resource group, in this region, give it this name. I previously ran this command, and this created an identity, and it was not yet assigned to VM. And then I ran this command, IV VM Identity Assign, to this uh, VM inside of this resource group, that identity that we just saw, okay? And once it is assigned, what I can do is I can run a command to show me the identity so I can see its properties, exactly how we see in the screen here. You can see the client ID right there and the principal ID, and we will need um, the client ID to assign uh, to the user. So just going back here. So create role, we'll give it a role, we'll give it a client ID, and let's see what happens. It will not work, just warning that this will not yet work. There will be one more step we need to do, but I wanna show you what the error message will be. So let's take this client ID and include it 
here. So I need to fix my command a little bit instead of role password with login, it should say create role with login password in this role. And let's see what happens now. And what we see is could not validate user uh, with the ID tenant. And this is because what I'm passing here is actually getting it confused. It's trying to validate, this, the Postgres server is trying to validate that this actually user exists and it cannot do it. So there is one un currently undocumented yet command. So it will probably be documented here once this becomes documented. But for now, what we can do is we can say AD validate OIDs and tenant to be off. And let's try this command again. And we see this succeeds now, right? So it created this user. And we can confirm this role is there, PG roles. It's right over here somewhere, right there, Postgres MSI. And it's now defined as a valid role inside of this Postgres. So in this other window, what we will do is we will try to log in instead of using the admin user that we you know, know password of, we'll try to get the token from the managed service identity and then connect using that managed service identity directly that we defined. So step number one will be how do we get the access token? So what we will do is we will make a request to the managed identity token endpoint. It's documented right here in many of these examples under managed identity documentation. But instead of passing a resource type of let's say management API, in our case, we will be passing the resource type representing the Postgres service. How Again, how do we know that that's the resource type? It's documented right here. Okay, this is the resource type for the token. So let's see what the token is. And I'm running this command on the VM that has the managed identity assigned to it because otherwise it obviously will not give me any token. And I got back my uh, token. And here is the token that I will be using. So I'm just copying this again. I'm not worried sharing this on the screen because this will not be valid very soon as I delete this VM. Okay, so I copied it. And what we will do now, we'll again set it into the GPP password parameter. Okay, so that's the token of the managed identity. And what we will do now is we will try to authenticate to Postgres using psql, but instead of the use, using the username as we used before, let me just paste the command and we'll edit it live. Instead of using the admin user like this, we will use the user name we created. So what did we do? We made it AV Postgres to MSI, right? So this is the role we created, the user we created. So we will try using that as we connect AV Postgres to MSI. So first, let's use something that's not right, right? So we'll just use invalid. I just put something at the end here and it will try to use this password and this user and hopefully it will tell us that I failed okay, as expected. Now let's make this the valid ID and remove the extra at sign over here. Sorry about that. And we can see we are logged in using the identity that we didn't need the password for. We just said to the VM, hey, VM, go to the managed, uh, managed service identity endpoint, get your token, and then use your token as a password to connect to Postgres. So an application running on this VM can get the token from the local endpoint and then use the resultant access token as the password to connect and there is no reason to store a password in the application running at this VM. So this is all 
uh, great. And I wanted just to show what happens if I go out of here and then I go back to the previous and I drop this previously defined endpoint, right? I just drop roll. And then we try again to connect. We're trying again to connect with the role that was dropped. Obviously, this will not work. And then we can add the role back. Again, just a reminder, this is the client ID, which we got from the managed service identity that was assigned, not the principal ID, but the client ID. And when we do this, we are once again able to successfully connect. That's it. Thank you.